Hello and welcome to our today's webinar. The topic today will be the Marvis iPad app. Um, as I told you last week in the hard hardware seminar webinar, today we will talk only about the software, right? First of all, I want to introduce myself again. My name is Manuel Kreisig. Um, I'm now working about 16 years for Luft and I'm a responsible person for the hotline and for the technical service. So I will guide you today through this nice Marvis webinar. Again, you will be able to uh, ask questions if you want. So uh, you can use the on the webinar software. On the right side there is a, a box uh, where you can put your question in and um, during some breaks in the webinar we will uh, answer all this question. Okay? Alright, so let's start. Um, with the iPad app and I want to show you first the main screen of the app, okay? And the main screen, you see that normally it's connected through the Marvis via Bluetooth, of course the iPad, and on the main screen you will see some different parts. That means on the left side here, you will see the measurement values, up to five of them. So you can only display five of the values, right? Or you will have an icon for the value, you will get the, the name of the value, and you will get, of course, the value itself. Then on the right side, you will see the map. And on the map, you will, because it's a GPS uh, function here, uh, that means you will see with a point, you will see the Marvis on the map. And when you start to drive, of course, you will, the, the, the Marvis will display the actual road condition um, of the road in different cars, for example, di displaying the different road states which you are detecting. Okay, that's the map. And then you have a small part here with three little icons that are the status icons. That means on the left side you will see the status icons for the pairing, for the Bluetooth pairing between the Marvis and the iPad. Normally you will get a green sign here that it is the, the communication is working. Then you, in the middle you will have the symbol for the connection to the SmartU free server. So that means if you want to um, send the data to the SmartU free, Smart free server and the communication is okay, you will also get a green small arrow here. And at the end here on the right side you will get um, the information about the GPS signal. Now, that means that's the real-time signal here. Alright, that's the main, let's say, screen which normally you will work with. Of course, I will also explain the other screens and the other menus uh, in a few minutes. So, iPad app functions first of all. So, what are the functions of the iPad app? So, of course, you will be able to configure different parameters for the Marvis, of course. So, that's the reason for the iPad app. Then, you will be able to visualize the measurements, like I have shown you before on the map, for example, and also as values in a table. Of course, colored road state is directly on the map. Of course, that's very important. That means you will really see the actual road condition, the road status uh, on the map, and with different colors of depending on the road condition, of course. Then you will be able to do the auto pairing uh, via Bluetooth. So that means you will be able to establish the Bluetooth communication, the iPad app. And then automatic data upload to the Smooth Smart U free server. So if you want to send this data, then you will be able to configure that in the app. I will show you that later how to configure it. That's often asked how to do that. Then, of course, the firmware update. So, the, also the app will be able to show you if there is a new firmware available or not. And then you will be able also to decide if you want to put the firmware on the Marvis or not. I always recommend to have the latest firmware version installed because normally we are always improving the firmware. That means we are improving the measurements, we are improving the, the algorithms. Uh, which are behind the measurements of the Marvis. 
And the last point, calibration assistance during the installation. That means, and that's very important, the calibration of the marvels, that means the, 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 the dry adaption can only be done with the app. That means there is no other tool to do that. So you need to do that with the iPad app. By the way, in the future, that means in the next weeks, we, uh, we will release also an app for Android devices. So at the end, in a few weeks, you will be able to download from the Android App Store also the app to uh, install it on an Android, let's say, tablet. All right, so let's go on. The Maui's measurement channel. So these are the channels which can be displayed by the app. So these are all the channels which also, of course, the Maui's only can measure. So we have, of course, the water film height here. In a measure, the measuring range of the water film height is between zero and six thousand micrometers or six millimeters. We have the road condition, of course, with the different road condition. Uh, states like uh, dry, damp, wet, ice, sh so not, that means that's not show, that means that should, should be named snow, of course, <laughs> snow, ice, chemical wet and snow, right? Then road temperature between minus 40 degrees and 70 degrees, then the ice percentage between 0 and 100 percent, friction between 0 and 1 without a unit, then the relative humidity and the road temperature between 0 and 100 percent and the dew point temperature between minus 50 and 60 degrees. So these are the channels which are available from the Maris and which can also be displayed in the app. <coughs> so that's, um, let's say, a minimal uh, setup time. Uh, I want to show you that it is very easy to set up the Maris and, of course, also the app. What you have to do is, first point, mount the Maris to the magnetic holder and put the system on to a vehicle. That's the first step. Then download the Maris app, of course, from iTunes so, and install it on your, app, uh, on your pad. Enable the Bluetooth connection and pair the device with the Maris, which is very easy because it's normally done automatically. Then calibrate the sensor on dry pavement. Set the thresholds for damp and wet if you want to change them. We have standard values for that. Normally, um, it's uh, 10, 100 micrometers, but some customers want to have a different one. So if you want to have different ones, you can change them, of course. And then you can start. You're done, right? Marvis is ready for operation. And that's really easy. Normally, the setup time, the maximum setup time, which we normally think is maximum, it's really maximum 60 minutes. So, and then you can start to measure. So what I want to show you here is the different, let's say, uh, menus which are available uh, in the app. And that means that's the menu stru structure of the app itself. Normally we start, if you click on the button and you, um, you start the app itself, you will start in the main view, the main menu, which I showed you before. And the structure is that you are not able from this main view to directly be guided to, the, to all the different um, um, displays or menus. So that means it's in a row, right? So that means if you want to go to the adjustment level here at the end, you have to pass all the other menus before. That means from the main view, from the main menu, you will be able to click into the channel configuration menu. Then you will be able to click into the device configuration menu and at the end you will be able to click into the adjustment um, menu. That's how it works. So it's not possible from the main view to click directly into the adjustment menu here. Then you see we have here um, a border, right? So why? Because on the right side here, device configuration menu and adjustment menu, you will change something in the sensor. That means you are doing, you are uh, configuring some parameters new or changing some parameters. That's the configuration here. 
you change the configuration. That means if you do that on the right side on these two menus and you click back to the channel configuration, automatically the Marvis will do a reboot to, let's say, to program the new settings into the Marvis. All right. So that's let's say the the theoretical part of the of the um, of the webinar. So now we're going into the um, real part. So I will switch to the camera now and show you how it works. So okay, that's the iPad here in front, the main uh, page. And of course, the first thing we need to do if the Marvis is re really uh, operating is to enable the Bluetooth uh, pairing or the Bluetooth connection. So that's normally done in the normal standard settings here. All right? So click on the settings and if you open the settings on the left side here you will have a small table menu with different parameters which you can click on. And for us the important one is the Bluetooth menu here. Bluetooth. And you see it's off. All right? So of course we need to if you want to, we want to pair the, the Marvis with the iPad, we have to switch on the Bluetooth connection. So click on Bluetooth and then you have the small uh, trigger here which you can activate. That, that, that means you are enabling the Bluetooth con uh, communication and you will see automatically the iPad will recognize the Marvis and automatically you will be asked for the PIN code to pair the Marvis between the Marvis and the, the iPad. And the pin is always the same for all Marvis se sensors. It's 1007. One, zero, zero, okay? Okay, now we are connected and you will see that here. Connected. All right? And then you know that everything is working, all right? So you can go back now, close the main settings. And then, of course, we want to start the app. So go to the app, click on the app, and then that's the main menu. And then if you do that the first time, you see there is nothing on the left side. So there are no values, right? So here, no values, which can be seen here. But you have the pairing symbol here with the green light, so everything is okay with the pairing here, but no value. So that's the first thing we need to do. That means we need to, um, to configure the channels. And the co channels can be configured um, using this small icon here in the middle, right? By the way, we have another one on the left side that shows this one. This shows the LED of the Marvis. So that means the Marvis LED is displayed also on the, on the app. That means if the Marvis LED is blinking blue or flashing blue, you will see it here. If it's flashing red, you will also, also see it here on the screen. Okay? So now we're go we want to go into the next menu, in the channel configuration menu again, and that's this little small button here, so push it. And then we are in the sensor channels menu. And again, you see there is nothing, of course, because we have to activate the channels first. And we do that with the small plus here on the right side. Here, see that? We will mark it with the, with the mouse, scan up, and click on that. And if you do that, the first time you will be asked, Add sensor channels. Add default sensor channels for Marvis. Of course, we want to add the, the standard channels first. So click on Add, and you see now that the let's say standard channels are added. We have now the road temperature here. We have the dew point temperature here. We have the water film height here. With the ice percentage here, friction and road condition. And you see also there are some different some numbers in front of the ch channels and that means that if you go back to the first page the, the, the value with the 1 is displayed at position 1 the value with 2 is 
um, will this blade and position two and so on. So that's the position in the first menu. We will see that now. I will go switch back now to the main menu and you see it now. Right, road condition position one, water film height position two, friction position three, road temperature position four and ice percentage position five. And you will also see now the actual values, right? And if you start to drive normally here on the right side, you see the blinking point, that's the Maris and the position, the actual position of the Maris. And if you start to drive and you start your tour, then normally the, the pin will also move and you will see the road condition on the map with different colors depending on the real road condition on the road. All right. So that's the first step. Now then the second step is how to change or to configure the sensor itself. So again we need to activate this small button here to go into the next menu again. Then of course I told you it's always in a row so we want to enter now again the next menu and this can be entered here with the eye. This small button so click on it and now we are in the UMB devices menu and here the Marvisk information are displayed. That means which type of sensor is installed at some Marvis, then we also see the, the serial number and the hardware version and the software version which is installed and everything, okay? Alright, and then you click on the, to enter the next menu, the last menu, we click on this small arrow here which shows to the right side and now we are in the configuration menu, right? and it's divided into parts so I would want to try first of all to explain the left part and then I will also try to explain the right part. So on the left part of course you can change the description here so that's easy that's only to click in and you can enter your own description of the sensor if you want. Then you can switch on or off the status LED that of course if you want to do that you can do it if maybe um, some customer says that it's uh, that's uh, confusing or something like that then you can of course switch off the status LED if you want. Then we have the damp and wet threshold parameters here. I told you that the wet and uh, or damp and wet threshold is 10 and 100 that means that's the standard values. That means that if the sensor detects between 0 and 9 micrometers of water the output of the road condition will be dry. If the sensor detects 10 micrometers and between 10 and 99 micrometers, the output of the Marvis road condition will be damp. If the sensor detects 100 micrometers or more, the output of the Marvis road condition will be um, wet. So that's the threshold. You can change the thresholds here if it is necessary. Normally we, that's what why we use this type of, uh, of uh, values here. We made a lot of tests and in our opinion um, these are the right thresholds for that. Of course it can change it. By the way it's also TLS standard here which is the German regulation system for highways. Okay the next uh, value parameter is the interference suppression time. That means um, which is 500 milliseconds here, standard. That means if you, for example, drive over uh, a road and the asphalt or concrete will change. Normally there is a small gap between the two different asphalts. And of course this can um, create um, some wrong values. And therefore we have this suppression time. That means during this Within this suppression time, um, if you drive over this, the, 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 the gap, for example, this can, will not be recognized by the sensor. So the sensor will not give you any type of uh, wrong values here because it's inside the suppression time, which is 500 milliseconds. You can change them if you want. Uh, again, we made some tests and in our opinion, 500 milliseconds is the best uh, um, value which you can set here, but of course you can change them can also um, have longer suppression time. If Maybe it depends on the asphalt types. If you have big ga gaps or something like that, maybe you need to, to, um, to go up with the time here. 
By the way, also an uh, often asked question is what happens if the asphalt is changing? If um, is the sensor also, um, be able to measure then different to, between two different asphalts? Of course, we have a logic algorithm behind which detects different types of asphalts. Of course, during the change, that's why we use this suppression time. Um, the sensor needs some time to change the algorithm inside internally, and but that is not pro not a problem. So, uh, if you do, are driving over two different asphalt types uh, during one tour, this, this this is not a problem for the measurement. All right, and then we have the next key or the next button here: Bluetooth pairing. Of course, you can switch on or off the Bluetooth pairing. Uh, I would not recommend to do that because you want to communicate with the sensor, right? So it's better to have the Bluetooth pairing activated here. So measurement interval, you can change the measurement interval also here. Um, normally, the standard value is 1000 milliseconds, which means one second. Between the iPad um, will be able to to measure between uh, 0 0.1 second, I think, and five, uh, 5 seconds. So you can change the time here um, for the measuring or measurement interval. So something um, important is the road condition model here. We have different presets which you can use. That means we have the preset AVG. Winter 1, Winter 2, Winter 3, Summer 1 and Summer 2. Um, the people often ask me what, what that means. So, it's this, first of all, it's described in the manual. So, I will switch now back to the, to the presentation and I want to show you <coughs> um, how it works. So, here again we have the six different presets, the sixth one. So, we have average, we have Winter 1, Winter 2, Winter 3, Summer 1, Summer 2. And the road condition itself is calculated, of course it's a calculated values, and based on three different measurements. So the, the road uh, condition model is based on the road temperature value, on the water film height uh, value, and on the ice percentage value. And depending on these values, the road condition will be displayed. And of course, with the different presets, you can change the priority of different values. That means, for example, if you use AVG, which means average, of course, then for all the three different single measurements, the, the road condition model will use the average value to calculate road condition model. For winter one, you see, the, for, the road con, for the road temperature, the minimum value will be used, of course, because um, it's, a, it's a risky time. And so, we want to get, let's say, uh, um, and the most let's say, risky road condition in this case, to know what happens on the road. So, in this case, it's minimum road temperature value, maximum water film, again, it's, that's logic, and of course, also the maximum value for the ice percentage. Winter 2 has some different values, so average for road temperature, average for water film, and ice percentage maximum, winter 3, minimum, average, maximum. So, it depends on the customer which model calculation he wants to activate for the road condition in the Marvis or in the app, let's say in the app, not in the Marvis. Okay? You see the same thing here, you, of course you have Summer 1 and Summer 2, which is normally not so important. Here we use, of course, of course the different parts, so maximum of water film and minimum of, um, of ice percentage and average of road temperature. Then we have Summer 2, average, average and minimum for ice percentage. And on the little small picture here, you see how it works. That means the road condition model here uses the three values of ice percentage, temperature, road temperature, and water film height. They are, they are going into the road condition model. Depending on which preset you are using, the minimum, the average, or the maximum value are going into the road condition model calculation and gives you then the road condition and the friction, right? Because these are based on the road condition model. And, of course, in addition, you will also get, of course, the single water film height value, the single road temperature value, and the single ice percentage value here. That's how it works. So, let's go back to the 
iPad. So that's the road condition model here on this side here. So you have to decide which road condition model you want to use. Of course, um, I would use, so, uh, if you are using the Marvis during winter time, uh, of course that's a recommendation from us, I would use one of the winter uh, presets here, of course, okay? So, then that's the left side. I think that's clear now, hopefully. And on the right side we have the adjustment profiles. We have six adjustment profiles which are available. That means why do we use adjustment profiles here? Um, the reason is that maybe you want to use the Marvis on different, on different vehicles. And for different vehicles you of course need to do extra special calibration for e each vehicle. So that's the reason for the presets. So you can mount this Marvis on six different vehicles and store these profiles or these adjustments in these profiles. All right? And normally we recommend to name these profiles in combination with the maybe with the vehicle type and with the plate number so that you know which profile you have to use um, depending on the car which you are using, for example. So, and if you want to do the calibration itself, the adjustment itself, then you only need to click on the adjustment here. That's, for example, the profile 5. And then you can say, okay, please name the profile. So, enter a name, maybe plate number or something like that. And then you have the duration here. Duration means how long the calibration or the adjustment will, will take. 10 seconds is the standard time. Of course, you can extend the time if you want, but it's not necessary. Then, we have a nice checklist here. So, I will go back to the, to the presentation. So, pro the preparation or the checklist means that you have to do different things before you start with your calibration, of course. So, the first thing is that's clear. You have to download the Marvis app from the store, right? Then the second thing is the preparation. The second preparation is to install the sensor correctly on the car. That means you have to use the right height, depending on the version which you are using, one or two meter version. You have to uh, use the right angle. You have, of course, to check the free line of view to the measurement area. And then, normally, if you have checked all these things, of course you have to to, enter, to place the sensor to a dry part of the asphalt. That's also very important. Then you can start with the adjustment. And this, what what is shown here on the on the sheet, is the same like shown on the iPad. So that's the checklist here, which you see here. So checklist. Then you can check sensor position, correct distance and angle, representative pavement kind structure for projected operations area. Dry and untarnished road segment for adjustment. Free line of view to measurement area. Vehicle stopped. And temperature below 20 degrees. That means the calibration can only be done under 20 degrees. And then if everything is okay, then you can strike the override button here. And if you use this button, then the new configuration will start, or the new adjustment will start, and will be written into the... Um, the Marvis and into the app, of course. Then you have also information here about the operating temperature and you have a small LED if everything is okay. So if the LED lights red, uh, green here, then the status of the, of the Marvis is okay, the temperature status. That means we have the LED temperature and we have the body temperature. The LED uh, temperature must be between 9 and 40 degrees, which is okay here with 30 degrees. The body temperature must be between 44 and 40 degrees, uh, which is okay with 29 here, right? So, and after that, the configuration is done. That's all you need to do for the adjustment. Then you can switch back, and um, that now the, the sensor is ready to, for measurement. And then you can go back to the main menu, menu and then you will start your measurements after the adjustment. Of course, if you install the, 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 the Marvis now on a new 
vehicle or a different vehicle, you have to do the same procedure again. Maybe you, you have the profile stored, so you have to switch to this profile, or you have to do a new adjustment if it's a new vehicle. Again, then you have to click on the on this icon, then you have to click on the eye, then you have to click on the arrow, and then you have to do the calibration or switch to the profile. So that means to click here. You see, this profile is now activated with the arrow. Here. If you want to switch to another one, then you have to switch here. That's how it works. Here, switching, you will be asked, and then now, as you see, now the arrow is again changed, and now this profile is active. So that's what you have to do if you change between different vehicles. That's very important, because if you do not do that, you will get wrong values. So let's go back to the main menu now. So do you have some questions until now? So now please ask some questions if you have some. <clears throat> we will wait some minutes. So no questions, so we will go on. We will, you will also have some additional time at the end. Because the next thing is, which I want to inform you is, how to set up the server um, upload. That's often asked, and so I will try to show you how it works. So if you want to set up the server connection, for example, this cannot be done or in the Marvis app itself. So you, what you have to do is to close the app, and then we go back to the main, to the standard settings here. Standard settings button, so click on the standard setting button. And now we are going into the settings, the standard settings of the Marvis app, which is part of this table here. So we scroll down, and here you have different apps and general settings for the apps. And we have also the Marvis app here running. See? So we click on the Marvis app, and these are the general settings here now for the Marvis app. And here you will be able to enter the configuration of the server connection. So we have the server connection me menu here, this small box. You see that? It's written server connection. And of course, here is a small button to activate the server connection. So if you want to send the data from the app from the iPad to the to a server you have to enable this button so that's the first thing enable it then you have to enter the IP address here of the server and the TCP port which you use to communicate with the server the standard port for the Marvis is 30100 that should work with normally with the servers. If this port is occupied by the server, then you have to change it, of course. And the server address for the Luft or Mix server is 80.81.19.9. This can be used if you order the data providing from Luft or Mar from Mix. That means that's the Luft server. And if you order the data providing, which uh, you have to pay for yearly, I think. Then um, the, 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 the iPad will automatically connect to our server, to the Luft server, and we will configure the, the web page, the Glance web page, and the, the, the SmartView web page, and then you will receive, as a customer, you will receive the, um, the, the, the IP address and, or the host address of the server and the username and the password you want to have and then you can log into this page and see your data live there in real time. So that's the, the, the version if you order, of course, the data providing from Luft. If you want to send it to your own server, of course, that's also possible. But again, remember, it's only possible in combination with SmartView. So if you, you want to push it to your own server, you have to install the SmartView there first, and then you can enter your own server IP address, please 
uh, be informed that some sometimes there are some problems with firewalls and routers and everything. Of course, you have to know how to do that. You, you need to maybe you have to contact some IT specialist to check that this works. So because um, we faced some problems in the in the in the past with with customers, and you have to know about these um, rules, right? Firewalls and everything. So it's not only entering the IP address, and that's not uh, uh, that will not work. You have to open, of course, a server for the communication first. Okay, and then you have also different other things like communication timeouts in seconds, communication interval in seconds, which is not so important to change. Normally, you can use the standards one. Then the transmission interval. Of course, maybe that's important. The standard value is 10 seconds here. So that means that the iPad app will transmit every 10 seconds a new value to the server. Then location change stand stand by timeout device communication stand by timeout so you can also change this parameter. So these are the this is the box the window of the server con connection here. Then we have the device connection box here where we can enable the device connection. Of course, you should enable it if you want to communicate with the device. Then that communication timeout which is 750 milliseconds. So um, after this after the iPad starts to communicate with the with the device and after 750 milliseconds there is no response you will get an error message we try it off on error you are free so that means that the app will, will try to do that three times the Marvis UMB address is 40961 you should not change that because that's the class ID of the of the of the Marvis UMB sensor and then here you can also change Imperial units. So that means normally you will be the, the values for the uh, for the temperature and the road um, for the water film are displayed in Celsius degrees or and uh, micrometers. Um, if you want to have Fahrenheit uh, or in mils, you can change this here. So then we have the data display here, and then we have the simple road condition status: green, yellow, red. What does that mean? Sometimes customers want to have a real easy solution for the road condition. That means they want they want to use the road condition model uh, like a traffic light. That means with the uh, road conditions green, which are okay, no problem, with the road condition yellow, which is critical, and with the road condition red, which are alarm uh, road, road um, conditions. And if you want to use that, you can you you can activate the button here. I will show you how this is mapped because it's often asked how we map these three small functions here. And here is the description. First of all, map display. On the right hand side of the display, the map with a color trail of the route taken is shown. The map can be moved, zoomed, of course, with the usual pinching and swipping gestures. The color mapping for the trail on the map depends on the app setting simple road condition status green, yellow, red. If this is active, the mapping is as follows. So you see that here. So it's divided in different, uh, or the, let's say the road conditions are put into different colors. In three of them, of course, green, yellow, and red. So it means dry, damp, wet, for example, are green. Also, chemically wet is green. Yellow is freezing and critical, of course. And red are the conditions ice and snow. So that's how it works. By the way, this is also displayed, or this information can also be checked on our Marvis homepage. Yes, we will enter it. We'll, we'll enter the, uh, the internet address now in the box, and we will show it to you. So that's the homepage address. On this, on this homepage you will find all different informations about the Marvis and about the app, by the way. Also the information we talked about today in the webinar. So, these are the, the, the that's the, let's say, um, simple road condition status. If you do not activate the simple road condition uh, status, then you will have the colors like displayed on the right table. So that means for dry you will get light gray color on the map. 
damp, light blue, wet, dark blue. Ice, rosy, snow ice, red, chemically wet, dark gray, freezing yellow, critical again, rosy, and snow is red. Okay? All right, so let's switch back to the iPad. <coughs> Then we have, of course, fade out interval in seconds, remove interval in seconds. That means because we are displaying dynamic road conditions on the map, we, they are not always the same also after 10 hours, for example. So we have a fade out time, which you can uh, configure, which is here standardly. It's 1,200 seconds. Um, and also w the same time is the remove interval is also 1,200 seconds. That means it will be also removed after this 1,200 seconds. You can change them if you want. So, of course, you can change the fade out times and the remove times. So, at the end, we have the firmware update for firmware. Uh, that means you can activate the check for firmware updates. I would recommend to activate that, of course. And then you have also, and in the last row, you have the, um, the, the internet address where the app will check for updates, which is the standard Luft server, by the way. So don't, do not change something here. All right. So, questions. We are now at the end of the webinar, by the way. I hope you, uh, are, you had some interesting new features explained by me. Yes. And now you will be able to enter some nice uh, questions if you want. So we have one. Um, in the app, we have some data logging. No, there is no data logging in the app and on the iPad. What we have, what we have is um, that it's it is a data logging, but it's not uh, uh, usable for the customers. That means if you drive during the travel time and you lose the GPS signal, then this data will be stored temporarily on the iPad. If you again will get back the GPS signal then this stored data will be transmitted to the server and then displayed um, on the server. That means the data logging is only active if you have an upload of the data to a small free server. And it's only a small data logging. That means only during the GPS signal is not there anymore. Of course, if you drive and the GPS signal is not there, and you, this, the data will be not locked for displaying it on the iPad app. So on the, on, the, on the app, you will get no values anymore. Other questions? Okay. Oh, there's one, another one. On the Android, will be the same interface of program? I think yes. We will not change the interface. Of course, it will look like an Android app, not like an Apple app. <laughs> but the handling and everything will be the same, right? Because we don't want to have two different softwares for that. So we have to explain that twice. Or So it's easier to have one version, of course, with the same features. So the features will be the same. And in the future, if we change some features, the features will be changed for both. Um, platforms. That means for the Android platform and also for the um, Apple platform. Okay. So I think there are no other questions. So thank you very much for your interest. I hope... Uh, oh, no, there is another question, so let's do it. I missed beginning, sorry. <laughs> you already told that, but in the app possible to see status of Marvis, red, green? Yes, it is. So we can switch back. Here. Oh, no, it's, let's go to the, to the real Marvis app. If you start a Marvis app here, you will have the LED status here on the, on the left side. Here. And this st status LED shows you the same status like the LED of the Marvis. So if the Marvis is giving you the information red, you will see this status also in the app. All right? And the different colors are, that are displayed or are explained in the manual, by the way. So you can also check the manual for the different um, colors, what they, what they mean. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. 
Um, so, okay, then again, thank you very much for your interest. By the way, we will have new webinars in the future. For example, I will do some webinars in March um, about the WS, about new WS centers like the WS 700 and the WS 510. So, please stay tuned, check our homepage and register yourself for the new webinars. It will be a pleasure for me if I can see you again in the next webinars. Thank you very much and bye-bye.